Hello, welcome to another episode of Chaotic Torture RC. Uh, as I tried a couple weeks ago, I was gonna start doing a new series called uh, Tech Tip Sundays, and for today, I happen to be working on a project that I feel would be a very good one for people to do. Um, it has to involve with hooking a BEC to your speed control and receiver. In the process of doing so, when you hook up a BEC, um, you have to disconnect the positive wire on the uh, C. It's not hard to do, but I really don't like disconnecting the uh, positive wire from the actual speed control itself. So what I use, and I'll, I add them to my uh, receivers anyways because I waterproof and coat my receivers for my off-road and crawler trucks, so I put servo extension leads in. You get them in various lengths. This one's a six inch one. They're cheap. Um, what I do when I go to do my BEC wiring is I'll separate the wires like this. You can cut however you choose to do it. Sometimes I pull out pretty easy. That pulled out. That pulled out. Now I just have the two outer wires neutral on the ground. When I plug my speed control into there, I no longer have the hot wire going to the receiver, which will be right here. So when I hook that in, I no longer have, like I said, the hot wire is gone from the wiring equation. Now when I turn it on, You heard everything beep up, but no power from the receiver. Well, that's where wiring in the BEC comes in. For this project, I'm just using an energy one. I just recently started messing with them for the price. You cannot beat them. And they work fairly well. I've coated a few. There's not a whole lot to do to waterproof these. You just put some uh, silicone there real good, some silicone in around there real good, and then you're all right to go. Um, they pre tin your wires here that you have to solder to the battery lead. Um, I've already had a uh, battery connector hooked up to this speed control so all I'm going to do is just peel my heat shrink back just a little bit and I will go ahead and just tin that a little bit it would have been easier if I could have got some flux in there first I'm using a flux based solder so it's not necessarily needed it's just a flux paste helps it In fact, I'm going to go ahead and use a tool to smear flux on there just so I don't have to fight this. Put a little bit of flux on my uh, one of my drivers there. Put some there. Some there. And what that does is then once I heat that up and touch the solder to it, it flows to it immediately. Just a much easier, simple process for doing this. It does put off some smoke and it uh, stinks a little bit. I always try to have a fan blowing it away from me so I'm not breathing in the uh, odors of it. Put a little bit on my soldering tip there touch it there and that should be good and like I said energy pretend this one so now all I gotta do is let that cool for a second come back to here
let that cool for a second. And I should be done with my solder, so I can put my uh, flux up. Give that a second to cool. Now, since I've already uh, had this heat shrunk, and there's no, since I didn't disconnect anything to do this, it's going to be hard for me to reapply heat shrink tubing. I could go a few different ways about this. I could apply some liquid electrical tape. Um, I could wrap some actual physical tape around it. Today, I'm just going to use a little bit of silicone. I buy this out of a squeeze tube, small thing of it, it's cheap. And all I'm going to do is spray enough, well not spray, squirt enough around to just put a little protective barrier over it. And doing it on the battery end here isn't for the water aspect. It's uh, in case anything metal was to touch at, you don't want to short, short metal to metal out with it. But while I have this out, I will show you how easy it is for this specific BEC from Energy. They heat shrinked it already. I just squeeze and fill that hole in, smear it around, push the wire back out of the way some, and just get a good cutting like that. Wiggle my wire around, be sure I've got that hole filled up. And then I come to the other end where it's got an opening and a plug. I squeeze a little generous amount there, then I force it in. And once again, because I've got a, a loose wire there, I'd be sure to move that around and get the coating. Come back and apply a little more. And you can also do this to waterproof your uh, receiver if you chose to. Just go around all your uh, seals on the front and then cover all your openings and around your servos and stuff. And before you really go run that in any water, you want to give it ample dry time. It's going to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. This one says uh, rain ready in 30 minutes. Um, I usually let it sit a few hours before I run it. But now I've got the BEC hooked up. Uh, everything's plugged in. I can hook battery up. My BEC light is on. I don't know if you can set a little bit of light there. Turn that on. Turn that on. And then give it a minute. Do I have my everything plugged in right? Oh, didn't hook the uh, my mistake there. You got to plug the BEC into the bind or battery port of your radio or your receiver my bad there there now you hear the final beep and everything is working uh, really doesn't take that long to do this a few minutes to get everything set up um, let the silicone dry that you use if that's the method you go there, there's several different ways to go and like I said, I really recommend uh, instead of cutting the hot on your uh, hot wire on your speed control, just go ahead and get a servo extension and remove it from that, and it saves your ESC. If you ever want to swap it out with a different speed control, you don't have to keep doing all that. Just uh, cut the wires off at your battery connection to speed control, resolder to there. A uh, quick, easy uh, way to go about doing it. And also, if you waterproof your uh, receivers like I do, I will end up putting a coating all the way around this and halfway up these wires. Uh, you don't have to unplug everything from the uh, receiver if you ever needed to change your speed control or if you want to change servos or whatever you're running on your third or fourth or fifth channels. Um, I do keep in mind though, try to mark these 
ends that way you know what you're plugging into if you're not that familiar with the uh, receiver you're using anyways I uh, hope this was informative to somebody um, sorry for it looks like a little cluttered mess right here uh, I was trying to get a shot where it was everything was as close as possible and zoomed in the best that I could thank you for watching uh, like comment subscribe I'll answer any questions uh, and also if you haven't checked it out look for uh, chaotic torture on Facebook I've got a Facebook page where I do uh, of course I share my videos there but I also uh, post pictures of my projects and current builds and stuff things that I don't always keep YouTube up to date with and I put announcements there for uh, before too long I'm gonna do a couple giveaway contests um, one will be uh, announced through a YouTube video. The other one's going to be announced through my Facebook page. So uh, check that out if you would. It's a Chaotic Torture RC. Thanks for watching.